don't do that, chums, to say, count another Steve. And today, chums, I've got some No Man's Sky news from you. From you? Yeah, kind of, actually, yes. From you guys in the view of us. I say you guys in the view of us. This has come from the modding community and also those that like to do a little bit of data mining into the old game files. So, yeah, this isn't from Shaun of the Murrays. Actually, there's a little bit from the Shaun of the Murrays over on the old Twitter space. You know what? Let's just get into the news, Steve. Just get into the news. Here we go. Chicka pow pow, chicka boom boom, here I am. Over on Tinter Webs. Now Murray did actually put out that, you know, there's been a new branch experimental update. So there we go. On the 29th of the 4th, improve stability by optimizing memory usage. Now I'm part of the experimental branch, people, and I downloaded and installed located this update, and it was about 1.2 gig. The one before it only has like one line in it as well. And that was also similar in size. So I don't know whether Hello Games is packaging up the whole of No Man's Sky and redistributing it with every single patch update. But it doesn't seem to be their normal run-of-the-mill stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, anyway, let me, let me show you what we're on Steam. So here we go, let me just bring up Steam. Chukapow! And uh, there's my little window. You can see here, updated. There we are, after I finish work. Yeah, so updated that, and like I say, it was 1.2 gig. I don't know whether I can show you the actual file size inside of here. But yeah, anyway, I'm part of the actual experimental update, so there we go. I've got a video on how you can join PC Experimental. But there we go, I did that anyhow. And these patches, by list, they don't look like they're actually containing all that much. So being the curious man I am, I thought I'd reach out to the people that know. So I first hit up Kurt. You know, the maker of the No Man's Sky Assistant app. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's just scroll up to what I actually asked him. So here we go. Blah, 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 blah. I put, hello, chap. Anything in the experimental updates that might be a hint of an expedition on the cards? Or any idea on the end date of the last decals in the Quicksilver store, trying to gauge when the next update will drop? Now, Kurt came back with, hi, Ern. Can't see what's in the latest experimental branch. Hello Games have made changes that have messed up the way the MBIN compiler extracts the data from the game. So I'm a little stuck. The only prediction is that the next community mission will start on the 22nd of May. So although that I've said that perhaps we might see something on the 14th or 15th, best case scenario, that's not looking likely. Unless they tend to put in the update after we've unlocked the last of the ice statues and before the decals start, which we have seen them do that mid-flow on some of these items in the Quicksilver store. But it could be more likely that it's the 22nd of May. So that last video that I did maybe could be wrong. Yeah, there's a lot of Mays in there, isn't there? Considerable we're in May, nearly anyway. Anyway, let's scroll on down. It's actually the 30th of April when I'm recording this. OK, so here we go. I thought, ah, oh, OK. Thanks, chap. 22nd of May. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to recant that and backpedal a bit, but there we are. It's the world we live in. Cool. Noticed all the mods I have installed aren't working. Even the simple ones. Is that due to their file changes? Question mark. And does that mean there could be clues there, but nobody can get into them right now? Question mark. And then I also said, if it was, if I was to make a video, what's worth a mention on this change? How does it affect your app and the modding data mining crews? As we came back with, yeah, the mods are a bit broken state at the moment. Even though I use the MBIN compiler a lot, it's still mostly magic to me on how it works. But I think I can explain what has been happening in a good way. The MBIN compiler is able to decode the game files because the modding team that built it spent the time to figure out where the massive amounts of game data certain parts of the game exists. These parts of the game files could be something like the Quicksilver store and each have a GUID, you know, a GUI ID or a unique identifier. The MBIN compiler uses the GUI ID to know what kind of file data is reading and to know how to read that piece of data. One of the recent updates caused a lot of these GUID to change, causing the MBIN compiler to fail to decode the game files. I think that sometimes Hello Games does this on purpose, but most of the time it's by accident, and they have undone changes that affected the GOIDs, at least once if I remember correctly. Right now, the maintainers of the MBIN compiler are working to figure out what new GUIDs are able to fix at all, but it's a lot of manual work. 
It does indicate that at the very least there were changes made to the game that recognized a lot of the code, reorganized a lot of the code. This could be for, from a big feature added, performance improvements or changes in the way the game works, but we won't really know until the MBing compiler is working again. Rather curious stuff there. So even they're speculating a little on what it could be. It could be something big, or it could just be something in the way that the game actually runs and how it's optimised. Now looking at some of those patch notes, it does look like they've put in a fair bit to do with optimization and also fiction, fixing of crashes. So who knows? It could be anything, couldn't it, really? I think it's more likely that Hello Games made a small change. I kind of agree that had a much bigger impact on the game files than expected. So I put, cheers bud, I'll try and make a video, put a positive spin on it. But the thing is, that I find is a bit odd, is why do that so late into the development cycle of a No Man's Sky, when they know that it's going to affect mods, it's going to affect the No Man's Sky Assistant app, it's going to affect the community, the community that they know and love and... It doesn't quite ring right to me. So I'm wondering whether it, it might be something bigger on the cards. You know, we have all sort of speculated that this new starship, starborn runner that we've been given might be a racing ship. Could it be for them to add something maybe in to do with ship racing? Or maybe even to take the ship customization to the next level? Maybe they've had to change things up a bit. Maybe we are in line for a bigger summer update. Maybe this new expedition that's coming might have more to do with that terminal at the back of the Nexus that's been put in. There's a lot of maybes. There's a lot of what ifs. I'm not saying any of those are more plausible than the, than the other. It could just be, as Assistant No Man's Sky has said, a small change that had a big impact. It could be that. Okay, anyway, I hit up that Bomber Boy, because that Bomber Boy often makes mods. He made some of the best overall, well, some of my favourites, I should say, not the best, but some of my favourites, personal favourites, over on Nexus Mods. Especially that one that brought in the new sort of look and feel to the, the space stations prior. Anyway, I hit up that Bomber, that Bomber Boy. I said, hello, chap. I hear the encryption Hello Games is using may have changed the Embing compiler, and it isn't working right. How does this affect the data miners, modders, and the wider community you are part of? And why do you think they have done this so late into development? Okay, so that bomber boy comes back with, yep, yeah, they have changed the ordering of the fields in the M-bins. Where they were first ordered physiologically, they are now ordered alphabetically. Ah, okay. That seems a bit strange that they would do that so late in. I don't know. I don't know what the cause of... Could it be that they've got new people to their team and just ordering things alphabetically makes it a heck of a lot easier? Or even for them as a, an actual development team? Maybe. Kind of makes sense. Not sure what this really optimises on their end. Might have some time on the compiler? Question mark. M maybe. It could be that. It probably is that. That's a simple change. It's had a big impact. That's exactly what Kurt said. So it's nice that these are sort of handshaking off. They then then released another patch which changed the MBIN file version to 3250, probably to match the new changes, which need, needs a few more overrides to smoothly integrate into the modding tools, which Monkey Man is also now working on, and final change yesterday to update the name hashes for all the fields. So it looks like they're on top of it. Monkey Man is a freaking dev genius, and I think was one of the main sort of persons behind maybe the MGIN compiler. Forgive me if I'm wrong on this. I'm not really part of the mod in Discord. I'm, I'm a member in there, but I try reading this stuff. It goes straight over my freaking head. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a genius like these people. Heck no. Okay. Let's move on. It's broken the Mbing uh, compiler and anything that relies on it. Most modders are waiting on Monkey Man to update it to update their mods preemptively for what's next patch to drop to public. Even some of my most simplest of mods, you know when you pulse and you get all the star field whizzing at you and it sort of goes funny when it when it renders onto YouTube. I've got that mod on just to remove all that that noise. Even that one doesn't work. But it's taken a while since Hello Games seems to be dropping all these changes in chunks. 
I guess it's a good thing then that they are dropping these changes in experimental first, although it's still a massive hassle for the modding community, especially since there wasn't any official announcement or warning regarding this. You see, this is another thing that I feel wouldn't go amiss, to be honest. You know, I've re I've got a I've reached out to Hello Games in the past, and I know other content creators have reached out to Hello Games in the past, and we're very lucky if we get any sort of reply, if anything. You know, the only real ways and means of contact in Hello Games is through the Zendesk. I really wish that they would just have a couple of people from the No Man's Sky content creating community, Jason Plays, or myself, or Zane, you know, any, any of us, Beeble, whoever, okay? Somebody that they feel that they can push information to. It'd be nice to have one in the US, one in the UK, and a couple of others in other time zones around Europe, places like that. So Hello Games can give them all the same sort of thing. This is a community update. Please let your communities know. You know, they could have a Twitch contact, a YouTube contact. They could break it down, couldn't they? They could actually make this a lot easier for themselves just to put something out there about this. You know, modders, beware, this is happening. Or we're aware of this issue with multiplayer, we're working on it. That sort of thing. Just like a general heads up, especially in times like this where there's there's not much going on in the No Man's Sky community. I'd be thankful to put out anything that they've got or anything they're working on. Yeah, anyway, scrolling down. I've been unable to use my main data mining modding tools in No Man's Sky Mod Builder by CMK since that requires a few more under the hood changes to accommodate for the new MBIN. One thing that's certain that all these mods are going to need an update when it drops, especially if Hello Games keeps introducing changes up to the launch. Part of me is wondering whether Hello Games has done this on purpose. After reading this and also reading what you know Curtis said, mainly because if I was at Hello Games, I would probably have a PC to one side just for installing mods that the community have done, just to see what the engine is doing and what modders have done. You know, because you can gleam ideas from that. It's just one PC. It's not a massive ask in the studio to have that and just to mess about with. I think Hello Games knows what these changes would do to the MBing compiler. I wouldn't be surprised if they've got their own MBing compiler inside of Hello Games that this community has made just to see whether they can actually upset the tool. They might have broke it on purpose so they can put things into experimental that they can then test, knowing that we're not going to be able to data mine, see it and spoil it for everyone. Maybe they've done this as a stumbling block, a little mini hurdle, a little speed lump just to give them a bit of breathing room to understand whether this new update that they've put in sits pretty. Rather than put it out to Experimental and say, there you go, Experimental guys, go and play with this. It's a version of an expedition, because they did that last time, and that kind of backfired a little, because that version was exactly the same as the live. And uh, yeah, that upsets some of the community too. It must be a very big balancing act for Hello Games to get it right on what actually works with the community and what actually sits right for their studio. So yeah, it's a bit of an oddity. Bit of an oddity that. Anyway, scrolling down, Coolio. Not sure about the timing. The field sorting alphabetically is new, but the MBIN file version has likely changed before. I'm guessing it's emerged from the development branch that they've been trying to squeeze out some more optimizations, the effects of which is probably aren't fully visible in our version of the game yet. Hmm, okay. Interesting stuffage. Interesting stuffage indeed. Overall, this whole episode really made me wish that Hello Games communications were a little better. You and me both. And uh, there's some simple fixes. There really are some simple fixes. They could even put this on their front page of their website. They don't have to actually contact any community people. We could just go to their website and get the update. Or even on the front page of the Zendesk where you go to report things. They could have the top 10 things they're working on. As well as some latest news from the studio. Perfect. And that modding wasn't just barely tolerated, live out loud. You see, a lot of actual games companies integrate the modding community. It's a bit like what Bethesda done with Skyrim and things like that. But there's a lot of other games that actually, after the game has been out for a long time, start handing more and more over to the community in way of the modders. I would like to hope that Hello Games goes that way at some point, perhaps after Light No Fire's launch, where they embrace mods a little bit more. There's a lot of cool things mod support could do for No Man's Sky, 100%, although I might be a little biased since I've used one of the experimental memory editing APIs for it and how powerful the real scripting API would be. 
Yeah, so an API is like a middleware. It's like a handshake in a roundabout way. But yeah, I just said, cheers, buddy. I'll make a video. Yeah, I'm not seeing much of this in the communities that I'm a part of during the rounds. So hopefully this is new news to you inside of the viewers, people inside of the viewers. <laughs> Anyways, so that's that's pretty much everything I've got for you in way of No Man's Sky news. And it's it's more community news than, you know, from the Shaun of the Murrays. The only part from the Shaun of the Murrays is they seem to be putting update after update into experimental. But these updates are not going into public domain, which is odd because some of these updates seem to be around crashes and stability on different platforms. You'd think they'd want to get them out and tight in and locked in as soon as possible if they know that people's games are crashing and they're white screening on teleporting. Let me just have a quick look again at that, that list of things that they've actually patched. Here we go. Let's, go put it, let's just put it behind me there. If I scroll on up, you should be able to see it above my head. Fixed a crash to white screen white teleporting, which can occur when discovery data has become corrupted. That sounds rather serious. And it sounds like it might be across all platforms. You don't really want people's machines crashing, do you? Heck no, you don't. And this one here, improve stability by optimizing memory usage. From what I'm hearing though, this isn't an issue that's just happened on the 29th. I think it happened around here, around the experimental branch on the 24th. So it's a bit of an oddity. Who knows what's going on, people? It is one of those, isn't it? It's one of those where you've got to be in the circle of trust. You've got to be inside of the Hello Games development team to really understand what's going on here. And yes, communication is rather lacking. But at the same time, you know, modding is not supported. So why do they need to? Why do they need to announce it? It's just there as a bonus. Oh, well, that's how it feels like. It feels like a bit of a bolt-on extra, doesn't it? It's not sold with the game. So it's not supported by the developers. That's kind of how it could be looked at. I don't know. Sound of in the comments. Let me know. Is that a fair sort of assessment from myself? And what do you think it is? Do you think it is a large update in the wings? Or do you think it simply is to do with optimization? A few small tweaks have made that has had a bigger impact on a massive swathe of our community. Salute to Mondo, people. It's food for thought, isn't it? Have a good one. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye. Oh, but I don't know whether that means it's to do with the update that's coming. Because I think there is an update coming. Because it's good to put something in to put in the new Quicksilver stuff. Just as a final thought. Anyway, cheery bye.